Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, curry day 10 of the JavaScript challenge. This one is definitely difficult. We're getting into the weeds of functional programming. So to briefly explain what a curried function is, let's take a look at the example on the right side over here. Let's say we have a really simple function that just adds two numbers together. Of course, we can call the sum function like this. This is kind of the traditional way we pass in one and two. And of course this would add them together and then it would print out three. With functional programming, we have a bit more flexibility, or at least we'd like a bit more flexibility, and we'd like to call that function kind of like this, where we have to make a separate function call for every single parameter of the function. So for the first parameter, we pass in one, the second one we pass in two, and then it prints out three. This isn't just a single function call. After the first function call here, this is not a value. This is not gonna print out anything. This is going to return another function that this time, instead of taking two parameters, actually is just gonna take a single parameter, which is the B value that we're looking for. And then when we call this guy, a second time, passing in maybe two, then this one is actually going to return the result of B plus the A value that was passed in. How can it add A if it doesn't actually get passed in that A value? Well, that's gonna be something we have to figure out. You might already be thinking one way would be to implement some kind of approach where we maintain the state using closure. The fact that this function will have access to maybe some parameters up here, like the number, and that will be saved in state in in memory somewhere. So in summary, a curried function is similar to a higher order function. I guess the difference is that the parameter doesn't necessarily have to be a function, but the return value usually is a function. So that's a curried function. We have to call it consecutively to actually get the return value, which is not an integer. They tell us over here on the left that we actually want a bit more flexibility with our curried function. We actually want it possibly to be called, uh, let's say this sum actually takes three values, maybe a, b, c, something like this. We want a bit more flexibility. We don't just want to call call our curried sum function. By the way, we created this curried sum function by calling curry, passing in the function, which returned to us a new function. So this curry sort of acts as a decorator around our existing function, adding behavior to it, which gives us a new augmented function, our curried sum function. And the way I learned currying in school was that each time we call a curried function, we can only pass in one parameter. So to sum up three values, we do something like this. But I guess in this problem, they wanna give us a bit more of a challenge. And this is one valid way, which would add these numbers up and print out six. But another valid way would be to pass in maybe one and two. And then on the second call, pass in three. On this line, we had to call the function three times. But on this line, we only call it twice and we print out six again. We sum up one, two, and three. Basically, we will get the return value from our function once we have passed in the total number of parameters that we were looking for. This is a bit different from how I learned it, but that's what programming is about, continuing to learn, so let's do it. I'm going to be solving this first. I wanna mention that the editorial for this problem is pretty good. They show us two solutions, but I'm actually going to start with the second solution because I think it's a bit more straightforward. The first one is actually a lot more complicated. So for the first solution, we're gonna take advantage of closure. We're gonna maintain our own state with our own variable. So I'm gonna call this our list of nums because what we're going to do is try to accumulate all the parameters that are passed into our curried function, which by the way, we're returning like this. We're returning our curried function here, which should probably call this function somewhere inside of here, right? That's gonna be our goal. We might not know exactly how to do it, but of course we know we're gonna have to call this at some point. And of course this is gonna accept some parameters. So how are we even gonna get those parameters? Well, this is the function we're returning and this is the function that's going to be called like this. So it should be able to accept some arguments. And in our case, we don't know how many, so we're going to use this operator. I call it the spread operator, but I guess it's called the rest arguments operator when it's used like this. Personally, I always forget, so it's not like a huge deal, but conceptually, this allows us to pass in a variable number of parameters. And again, we are trying to accumulate the desired amount. Well, how do we even know what the 
the desired amount is. This function, if it's sum, will take three parameters, but maybe if I change it and get rid of the third argument, it's actually taking two. How do we know how many? Well, this isn't something you could probably just guess, but fn has an attribute called length, and length for a function corresponds to the number of arguments that that function can take. I didn't remember this off the top of my head, in case you're wondering. I also learned it today from the article. Okay, so in that case, how do we know if the number of arguments here is enough? Well, args is an array which also has the attribute length. So if these two are equal, then we are good. Then we can return the result, which is basically going to be this function called with these arguments over here. But remember, args itself is an array. Our function is not necessarily taking an array. It could be taking three parameters. So in this case, we are using the spread operator dot 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 args to take this array and expand it, which would basically be uh, if that array was these three values, it would basically be like calling this function with A, B and C. So in this context, this is the spread operator. In this context, it's the rest arguments operator. I know that's confusing. Using. Now, there's one thing about JavaScript here that I don't like, and it's the fact that double equal will actually not be as precise as you want it to be. So if we have a string, which is one, and we have a number that's one, this will actually print true. Let me prove it to you. So I'm going to console log this and then run this and you can see it does print true, but that's not kind of what you would expect normally. But if we add three equal signs, this will be a bit more strict and it will not only check that the values are the same, but also the type. This is of type number. This is of type string. So now when we print it, it gives us false. I don't know if we necessarily need that in this problem, but I'm going to go ahead and add it anyway. And now let's continue with the problem. Of course, the other more difficult case for us to handle is going to be when we actually don't have enough arguments. What do we want to do in that case? Well, that's kind of what we have our state here for. So actually, I'm going to update this code and I'm going to take the arguments that were passed in. And anytime we're passed in arguments, I want to append all of these to our current list of nums. So I'm going to do that like this nums is going to be equal to whatever is already existing in this array of nums, which we can do like this. And then I'm going to spread the arguments array and add that as like the second value over here. So this is basically creating a new copy of this array with all the original elements as well as the arguments that were passed in. Now, if you're familiar with leak code, you probably know this is not a cheap operation. This is an expensive operation, not just in terms of the parameters were passed in, but in terms of what the original length of the array was. So just keep that in mind, though this code, I will say, will work. And as we accumulate these, it could be possible that on one function call, we did not have enough arguments. So we had to keep accumulating them. So when we get to the point where we're checking for the base case, we don't want to check that the function length is equal to the number of arguments because we might take multiple calls for us to accumulate them. We want to check if the nums length is equal to the function arguments. And then if it is, we don't want to pass the arguments in. We want to pass maybe additional arguments, which is nums. Let's take a look at the else case. If we do not have enough, then what do we want to do? Well, basically, we expect the user or the programmer to call curried again, passing in more arguments so we can accumulate them again with our same state variable. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let's return curry. That's what's supposed to be called anyway. Remember, on subsequent calls, we're just calling the same original function. So we can go ahead and do that. That same function will still have access to the state that we created. Now, this code will pass, but I want to quickly mention that in case we want to keep calling the function multiple times after it's already been like completed, after we've already filled in the arguments, we probably should take those arguments and reset them. So so what I'm going to do here is first actually call this function and then just save the result in a temporary variable. And I guess I can make it const since it's not going to be changing. 
Sorry, that's just a habit that I picked up from Google. Anytime you have a variable that's not being reassigned, you have to use the const keyword or the linter will get you. And then before we actually return that result, we have to say nums is gonna be equal to an empty array. We're basically resetting that. So we're doing all the cleanup that we need to so that this curried function can be called again in the future. So now let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. Okay, all this talk about curry is starting to make me hungry, but we do have a little bit left I wanted to discuss. A really important thing about JavaScript functions is that there is a lot of flexibility on how these functions can be called, and that's kind of what really makes me hate JavaScript and why most people use TypeScript nowadays, though under the hood it's pretty much the same language. But let me actually show you what I'm talking about. Let's say I have a really simple function that just takes two numbers and adds them together like this, and then I want to print the result of adding those numbers together. I call add one, two. Of course, this is going to give us three, but now I'm going to pass in a third argument. This should probably give us an error, right? Nope. JavaScript doesn't feel like doing that. So it still gives us the intended result. It just ignores any additional parameters. And if that's not bad enough, watch what happens when we pass in a single parameter. Surely this will give us an error, right? I mean, what does this even mean to call it with a single parameter? But when I run it, you can see, nope, it does not throw an error. It just gives you not a number as the result. So this is is just something to be really careful of. Okay, now quickly let's comment this out and get started with the actual recursive solution, which is probably going to blow your mind. So let's go ahead and create our function curried, which again is going to accept an arbitrary number of arguments. And I think it's fine for us to have the same base case. Of course, if the number of arguments, if the length of our arguments is equal in length to the number of parameters our function accepts, that's kind of a base case where we can just go ahead and call our function with the arguments and return the result of that. Simple enough as a leak code syntax highlighting goes crazy, but the else condition is surprisingly less code than this solution, but it's not simple to come up with especially when you're not familiar with functional programming or just haven't done it in a while like me. Remember what we have to return here. We have to return a function because we expect the function to be called again if we did not pass enough parameters the first time. So at the very least here we know we have to pass in a function, not actually calling the function, just passing in some function that we are going to define here. So I'm gonna define a function. Now, of course, this function has to take in some number of arguments because that's kind of the whole point because the first time we might have called this function, we didn't pass enough arguments. So now we need additional arguments. But again, we don't know how many we might have to pass in. We could pass in two, three, four, maybe just one. We don't know. Therefore, we need again to pass in an arbitrary number of arguments, which I'm going to call new args. And I also notice I'm missing an H over here. I'll fix that. So now we have this function and and again, we are going to return it. But what do we define in this function? What should it execute? Well, we need some way to remember how many arguments were passed in the first time the function was called. And now how many do we need left? Well, I'm going to do something really, really clever. And I can't tell you what the intuition to come up with this would be. But why not just call the same function that we defined, the same curried function, but this time pass in both the args that were passed in the first time here and also the args that were passed in the second time over here. This way, we don't even need to count how many arguments we need. The recursion will take care of that because next time we call curried, now we're passing in the arguments the, from the first call and from the second call, and it will execute just like this. It'll check the if statement, were the args passed in this time equal to the function length? If so, call the function and return the return value. This is really, really clever. Some might even call it neat, but it's not easy to come up with. And I would consider this not very readable code. If I wrote something like this at Google, I'm pretty sure my tech lead would slap me in the face, but it definitely depends on the context. There are areas where I guess functional programming is very common. So let me run this to prove that it works. Whoops, I had a bug. And that is that when we call this curried function, we care about the return value. So we should probably actually return it. And now I'll go ahead and run it to check that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you soon.